Hi everyone, my name is Jack Allen Willard, and our video is entitled Compassion and Advice for Losing Weight. I'm in that boat. If you're in that boat uh, too, if you're in need of advice, compassion, support, uh, if you're at a time in your life when you really need to lose some pounds, well, let's talk about it here for just a few minutes. Um, as I record this in the middle of the night, it's two 15 in the morning, East coast time. Uh, I have done two videos uh, prior to this. Um, and, uh, I was going to pack it in, but I felt that I needed to speak to you about this issue. Um, because I know in January, which is, uh, when I'm recording, as I said, a lot of people have their New Year's resolutions, and uh, one of them is to lose weight. But uh, then there are those that have been told by the doctor, listen, if you want to live, if you want to make it to the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you've got to work with me here. I can't do it on my own. You need to lose weight. Your cholesterol is too high or your triglycerides. That's always the thing for me. Triglycerides too high and you uh, will see those numbers go down if you, say, take off 20 pounds, something like that. Some of you have a lot more to lose. I have more to lose, but my first goal, I'm not going to psychologically freak myself out. Uh, my first goal is to lose 20 pounds. Doctor said, my cardiologist said, if you lose 20 pounds, it will bring those triglycerides down. And I have other issues too. Maybe you do. Um, the thing about triglycerides, which has always been tough for me, is it can be simply a matter of uh, being hereditary. And if it is, you're only going to bring it down so much. I'm on the SEPA. And uh, it's an uh, expensive drug if I didn't have New York City uh, uh, benefits, Teamsters benefits for my drugs, you know. I would be paying uh, more than I could afford to pay. So I'm fortunate about that. Not everybody can afford to go on some drugs because they're just too expensive. But um, I, um, a few years ago, lost 30 pounds doing a physical job. I've never really done a physical job like that, but I found myself in a Honda showroom cleaning it every night and going up and down stairs and mopping and sweeping and vacuuming and wiping down windows and what have you. I'd never done that kind of work before, but the pay was pretty good. And uh, I was awaiting my retirement to begin. And even when I did get uh, to retire, did get uh, my social security and pension, uh, I still wanted to keep working for a while. And, uh, so that's, that's what I did. So during, uh, maybe the first three or four months of doing this job, I lost about 30 pounds. I came in at 270 and before you uh, know it, I was down to uh, 240, something like that. And it went about as low as maybe 233, something in that park, because I wasn't really changing my diet. You know, in fact, uh, you know what happens. You feel I'm working this hard. I'm getting out of here sometimes uh, 12, 15 in the morning. This was a big showroom. Uh, sometimes I had to also do the uh, service side, and that would be an eight hour uh, day or an eight hour evening or an eight hour Sunday, that kind of thing. And, uh, uh, you, you feel like you have earned a treat. And so, you know, the next afternoon before you go to work, there you are at the pizza parlor, the Chinese buffet, the sub shop, um, that kind of thing. Or maybe a, a nice uh, a Mexican meal, you know, with the refried beans and the rice and the chips and the guacamole. Guacamole is good for you. I think I'm going to actually sneeze. I don't know if I've ever sneezed in a video before. <laughs> I think it might happen. Anyway, um, you get to the point where, uh, you know, you have to pay the toll. It comes time to pay the toll if you keep putting things off. Because eventually I wasn't doing that job anymore. I was doing less hours and the weight started to come back on. 
and maybe 10 pounds. So I'm about, as I speak to you, somewhere around 245. And I'm on a program. In three months, I'm expected to lose 20 pounds. There is a cardiologist and then a specialist down at uh, Westchester uh, who wants me to do that, counting on me to do that. Uh, they don't really care personally, but they, you know, they encourage you and they uh, are telling you that it would be better, very beneficial if you do that because uh, what happened, and there's a whole video here about low ejection fraction right here at the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. You type in Virtual Church of the Disillusioned and you'll see all our videos and you'll see how I had a, a ejection fraction of like, well, they said it was like 40, 45, but the, the specialist that I talked to, Dr. Nadu from Westchester, he's in the ambulatory uh, care building and he he is renowned. He uh, He's a young man, but he's a professor in New York City, and he's there at Westchester Medical Center. And uh, uh, he said, your ejection fraction probably wasn't that bad. They had me have a cardiac MRI here in the small city I live in. And then I had to wait a long time. It was a long time to to get scheduled for it, and then a long time to get the results. It was supposedly some woman in Chicago that read the reports, and she was way behind. So the whole process was like four months. He says, uh, I don't think your fraction was ever that low, and uh, I don't think she was a doctor because she misread something. She she didn't realize that I have a uh, uh, an ambulism in my heart uh, in one of the muscles, which is the safer place to have it, apparently, you know. It's not likely to burst or anything like that. But uh, this is just one more sign that uh, you don't want to be putting stress on the heart. So I take a beta blocker. Maybe you do. Maybe that's one of the things you do. And uh, then he doubled. Uh, he doubled uh, the amount of uh, metoprolol that I'm taking. And I'm on Farsiga and what have you, you know. I mean, it's like uh, my uh, partner uh, and I, she has her box of pills and I have my box of pills. And uh, she's a diabetic, uh, type 2, and uh, she's a serial cheater. Sorry, honey. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, but it's true. And, uh, of course, uh, I was going right along, you know, doing my thing, you know. Oh, trying to make a small improvements. I wasn't running to the bakery and, 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 and throwing jelly donuts in my mouth all the time. But there were times when I was, and certainly pizza. Oh, yes. Pizza, Chinese food. Go to the Chinese buffet. You got to have the General Chow's, and you got to have the little sweet and sour chicken. And what's those little cheese things, you know, with a hot cheese in the middle of them was little puffs love that and they even had uh, garlic bread there to go with it but i'd have my salmon and my bass this is an incredible buffet called flaming grill in newburgh new york uh the town of newburgh and uh wow just it's just great but you can eat healthy if you put your mind to it there's enough healthy choices there i'd have my spinach and my broccoli and all that but i was mixing in uh, the the lo mein with it you know that kind of thing Nowadays, when I go there, I just have a tiny bit of the stuff that I really want. And I have my salmon, which I enjoy, and the bass, and uh, uh, a little bit of um, of uh, sushi with the uh, crab meat and the, uh, the uh, guacamole in it, the avocado, avocado, which is, you know, obviously guacamole comes from the avocado. And uh, so I do better now, and I didn't have my uh, my garlic bread. I, I stayed away from that. Um, but I know if you have been told that you are in serious trouble if you don't start losing weight, you're freaking out. Uh, because I know that uh, you do what I do. You use food as a crutch. I mean, I take Xanax have for years since my first divorce. <laughs> it's a low dose that I take, but it helps me relax at night because in a little while from now, I'm going to need to get some sleep. You know, I can't be sleeping till noon, one o'clock. And it happens sometimes, or I get up and do my little Robin Hood stocks and then go back to sleep. And before you know it, it's noon, it's noon <laughs> and I'm rushing to the shower. Uh, so I don't lose the whole day, especially in December or January as it is now. Um, but I know what you're going through because, uh, man, here in New York, we have great pizza. We have great Chinese. We have great deli with real hard rolls, you know, 
Um, and it's really tough to stay away from that stuff. Uh, what I do, this is what I do. I get up late. It can be as late as noon, but sometimes it's, you know, um, 10 a.m., 1030, what have you. And, uh, but I do some work here with my stocks here in the studio and what have you. And I don't get, I don't get down to the kitchen area, um, till after 12, one o'clock. And, and that's when I have probably a, an Atkins shake, you know, strawberry or chocolate. I'll have a, an Atkins shake or I'll have a cup of hot tea. I do use half and half in it. I'm trying to stay away from that. And I'll have like those Belvita bars, you know. I won't have the whole package though. If there's four of them and there's usually four in what I uh, get, I'll have two. I'll have two because I'm going to have the other two late at night with another cup of tea and I'll have milk in that, maybe 1% milk, you know, so it won't. You don't want to drink your calories. My son, uh, Corio, says that you don't want to drink your calories, so you want to keep it low. Don't be drinking regular soda, of course. Don't be drinking uh, regular Gatorade too much. Once in a while is okay, um, but you certainly don't want to, uh, you know, be uh, uh, gorging on uh, drinks. Um, the Atkins shake uh, is a uh, fairly low calorie, of course, and very high in protein, and so I have that. And then I'm going to be looking to have one meal that day. That's what I'm doing now. Um, in between that, in between my little breakfast, whether it be a couple of uh, Belvitas and my tea or a, an Atkins shake, um, I, uh, I go for my walk. Unless it is just impossible to do it, then I have a backup plan if there is. But uh, today I was out there and uh, I'm able to do it. I don't have chest pain per se, even though part of what I found out months ago was that I have one artery that's 50% blocked and the small one they can't stent, even if they wanted to, is 70% blocked. So again, diet will help that somewhat, but it's never gonna it's never going to end the blockage. But I have cardiomyopathy, and uh, that means that I have to uh, I have to uh, do what I can to to hold down the stress on my heart, and uh, getting the weight off, going from two forty five to two twenty five, and then once you're there, you can talk about getting you know, a little below 200. Older people can have a little extra weight on them usually, and it'd be okay. In fact, if you're super thin, that may not be okay. Um, so you can have a little extra weight, but you don't want to be, uh, you know, at 245, which is why I am now. And I, I used to be 270, you know? Um, so I just want to speak to you. I know what you're going through. Maybe you're like me. I, again, the other thing about living in New York is we have the most incredible Italian bakeries here, even though they're no longer run by Italians, you know, uh, as most of the pizza places are now run by a Spanish uh, Mexican people. Uh, the, uh, our uh, biggest Italian bakery here was just sold to acidics, but they kept the same crew. They don't know how to bake. Uh, the, the, the people who bought it don't. Um, and another force in the, the city I live in is uh, Korean and Chinese. You know, they're buying a lot of property as well. Um, but um, I, I can't go in there like I used to and get my black and white cookies and uh, my uh, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a jelly donut, something like that. They have so much to choose from. Uh, I haven't said I'll never have it again, but I'll have it. It's a treat every once in a while. Uh, it's it's the same with pizza. I have to be real careful about that because you see the, <laughs> the sign, I Pizza New York. In other words, I love pizza in New York, you could say. Uh, and I have uh, certainly shown my dedication and allegiance uh, to pizza uh, uh, over the years living here on the East uh, Coast. you know. And when I've lived in places like Rock Hill, South Carolina, uh, and even, well, out in California, I couldn't find good pizza at all. But I was much younger then when I was living right off Hollywood Boulevard for a year. But um, I know what you're going through, man. I know how tough this is. It, it, this was a safety net for you, this food, right? The, your macaroni and cheese it does more for your anxiety than any pill can do. 
your uh, pizza, your your Chinese and those delicious sweets. Maybe you like the Milano cookies like I do. Dunk them right there. I don't drink coffee, but I dunk them in my tea. And uh, I just love them. It soothes me. I, I, I've always said that uh, when I have something to celebrate, I want to do it with food, you know, and drink. Every once in a while, I want to have myself a nice margarita, you know. Um, and uh, if I'm depressed, I definitely want to have, uh, I got to console myself. So instead of taking it to prayer, uh, sometimes rather than do that, I, uh, I find myself going for all those comfort foods. We have a couple of great diners here. And when I go to, they make great homemade soups. But every Friday, they make the best macaroni and cheese. How about a hot turkey sandwich lathered in uh, gravy with the mashed potatoes, vegetable, and uh, maybe a little something for dessert, you know, a little something for dessert. They used to make great bread pudding. Who makes bread pudding anymore except a Golden Corral? And I don't think they make it there. <laughs> maybe they do. I don't know. But yeah, Golden Corral, you go into a place like that, you got to get your money's worth, right? You got to have the pot roast and some uh, chicken and some barbecue. And uh, oh, you're going to hit the salad bar too, a little salad. But uh, you're not going there for that, are you? Yeah, you're not really going there usually for the desserts. You're going there for the mashed potatoes, the gravy. The, uh, sometimes they got the sweet potatoes and they got all kinds of beef and chicken and what have you. Maybe they'll slice it. If it's the evening, they'll slice some for you. <laughs> it just makes you feel good. Feel, feel good. You're, you're worried about death. You're worried about uh, a loved one. You're worried about uh, the, the, a country that seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. Um, you, you don't have uh, someone that loves you. You don't have someone to be there for you and make you feel secure. Food is, uh, is, is your mistress. It's your mistress. It's your, it's your fallback. It's your tool to make it through that you can feel somewhat safe. And yet it can be very destructive. So we have to get to the point where we, we don't swear off those things that we love so much. I mean, have you noticed like with Nutrisystems, for example, all the food they show you is, is what we eat already. They're not changing your habits. They're just teaching you to eat a, a low cal version of what you love, smaller portion that tastes like crap. I mean, I'm sure some of it's okay, but let's face it. Uh, if you've had lasagna from a real Italian restaurant, you're not going to want a Nutrisystem uh, lasagna. <laughs> Do they even have to refrigerate that stuff? <laughs> so um, we know what good food is, right? No matter where you are, you found some good food. If you're in the uh, East Coast area, you know what good bakery, what good hard rolls really are, what good pizza is, etc. Um, I just don't, don't think you can give yourself the permission to just give up on it because um, you could find yourself stroking out, you could find yourself in a nursing home with a stroke and you're propped up by the television. I don't want to go out that way. I bet you don't either. You don't want to find yourself a type 1 diabetic. You don't want to find yourself clutching your chest and falling to the floor and wondering if this is how you're going to leave the earth. You want to get out there and maybe you're only going to walk a half a mile and then you walk a mile and then you, you pick a, a route that has a hill. And uh, before you know it, especially when it starts to get warmer, you do a little more. Now, if I can't get out there because it's cold, cold as ice, snowing and, and what have you, uh, there's stairs here. So I go up and down the stairs holding on to the rail so I don't fall down. You know, you don't want to trip on the stairs, but I go up and down the stairs as many times as I can. And it causes my uh, heart to, to pump blood and uh you know, if you can, if you can do your exercising to the point where you work up a sweat, the idea, of course, is to burn more calories than you eat. This is all we all know. This stuff we know to take the skin off the chicken. We just like to leave it on sometimes, right? We don't want skinless wings, right? Well, you know, this is all stuff we have to uh, we have to put up with some sacrifice and some pain to get to the point where we look so much better and feel so much better. And uh, then, uh, 
you keep up the exercising and you have a little more of the foods that you love so much. I'm never going to pretend that I, uh, that I have, uh, overcome pizza. I probably, uh, won't do that. Don't want to do that, but I've got to eat less. I used to say I eat uh, the first two slices because I'm hungry. And then I eat two more slices because it tastes so good. It tastes so good. Even Pizza Hut tastes good when you're hungry, right? I, Domino's, it's a stretch, but, you know, they can't even make their food look good on television. Not even in the commercials. Give me a break. I'm not much of a Papa John's fan either. The sauce isn't right. Sauce isn't right. I just hope that uh, you will share your your struggles with me if you're like me, a food addict. I have multiple addictions, but alcohol isn't one of them, thank God. But I guess you can probably narrow it down from there. I have to to watch my P's and Q's (laughs) or I'll be out in the street, (laughs) you know, not on the couch, on the street. Um, Well, I'm getting old now. Nobody wants me. So, hey, (laughs) Um, let me know. My personal email is jackthefairguy at gmail.com, jack the F-A-I-R, fairguy at gmail.com. And also prayer is very important. Um, we have many videos that talk about, um, you know, uh, faith here at the Virtual Church of the Disillusion, but never in a judgmental way. Leave comments here, like the video, subscribe, share it if you can, and let me know how you're doing on your weight journey. Is here in uh, 2023, we're trying to take off those pounds and we're not going to quit. We're not going to be a quitter. We're not going to find ourselves stroking out because we, we just couldn't put down the, the plate, you know, or put down the fork. You know, we're not going to let that happen. We're going to do this this time. We're going to walk. We're going to do a little bit more each day and we're going to get a little sweat going. Maybe for some, it's you want to join a gym, but you got to be active. Get out there and move. As uh, Matthew McConaughey says, I believe in working up a sweat every day. And, you know, he don't look half bad. He don't, he, he's not homely <laughs> and his body is, uh, you know, I, I'd like to have it myself. I mean, I don't I have it, but, you know, I would like to have possess that kind of body. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me know what's going on. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.